All right, all right, we are back again with a little bit of geometry, this time chapter 1, section 3, midpoint and distance formulas. All right, the midpoint of a line, or a segment, sorry, the midpoint of a segment is the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. That means from A to M is the same length as from M to B because M is the midpoint of the two, so this segment AM is congruent to MB. A segment bisector could be a point array or a line or a line segment that intersects that segment at the midpoint. So this line right here bisects the segment AB. That means it goes through the midpoint. So in this case, line CD is a segment bisector of segment AB, which again means AM is congruent to MB. All right, um, if we want to find a segment length, here we have a skateboard design and we know that VW bisects XY. XY is the length of the skateboard. We want to find that length. We know that XT, so half of it, from the outside to the center is 39.9 centimeters. So first off, determining this is the midpoint, we know that XT is the same as TY. Both of those are 39. So the segment addition postulate tells us that adding these two together gives us the total length. 39 and 39 add it together gives us 79.8. Pretty straightforward there. All right, here we have a line segment, and instead of lengths, they gave us some algebraic expressions. We want to find the length of Vm, so we want to find this right here. We know that m is the midpoint of the entire segment, so that tells us that Vm the segment VM is congruent to the segment MW, or we know that the length VM is equal to the length of MW. So we can substitute here 4x minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 3, and then we solve. So we'll subtract 3x three fr three from each side. Cancels out here, leaves us with x minus 1 is equal to 3, positive 3. Add 1 to each side, and we get x is equal to 4. Careful, this is not our final answer. Notice they did not ask us, what is x? They didn't say find x. They said, what is the length of Vm? So we're going to take this 4 and plug that in. So 4, and then plug it in here, times 4, minus 1, 4 times 4, uh, sorry, minus 1, minus 1, we have 16, minus 1 gives us 15. We can check our answer by plugging it in here. We have 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 gives us 15. So, check, we did that correctly. All right, the midpoint formula. If you look at these points, we've got x1 and x2. Halfway in between lies this point right here. Okay, if we want to find the halfway mark between these two, we'd have to add them up and divide by 2. So let's say if this point was 1 and this point is 3, what lies halfway in between those two? 1 plus 3 divided by 2, that's 4 divided by 2, that gives us 2, right? 2 lies halfway in between 1 and 3. Same thing here, if I want a point that lies halfway in between two points, I have to add those two and divide by 2. So I have to average them out. So if I have a line here, where A has the coordinates x1, y1, and B has the coordinates x2, y2. 
then m, which is halfway in between the two, would have the coordinates of this for x and this for y. So that would look like this. Okay. The first coordinate, the x-coordinate, would be the average of the two x-coordinates. The y-coordinate is the average of the two y-coordinates. So this is my midpoint formula right here. All right, if we want to use this, find the coordinates of the midpoint m. All right, oh, where are we? Here we go. We want to find the coordinates of the midpoint. So we have the endpoints here. We'll label those x1, x2, y1, y2. All right, so now remember we have the average of these two. So we do, we add them up 1 plus 4 over 2. That's my x-coordinate, and then negative 3 plus 2 over 2 is my other one. Now work that out, and that is my midpoint m. 1 plus 4 is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5, and negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, divided by 2 is negative 0 0.5. Or if you have it as fractions, we've got 5 over 2 and negative 1 half. There we go. Okay, if we want to find the endpoint and we know the midpoint, we'll just give these the coordinates and then plug that into our midpoint formula. So we know that x 1, we have 1 plus x over 2 is equal to, is equal to 2, right, because that's the x-coordinate of the midpoint, and then 4 plus y over 2 is equal to 1. Then we solve that. Multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply by 2 on each side here. That gets us 1 plus x is equal to 4. Subtract 1. And we get x is equal to 3. Over here, multiply by 2 on each side. Cancels out the 2 here. 4 plus y is equal to 2. Subtract 4 from each side. And y is equal to negative 2. So our coordinates are 3 and negative 2. Okay, the distance formula. If you think of it this way, uh, if I want to know the distance from this point to this point. Okay, we have a line here between these two, and I want to know that distance. Well, I can make this a right triangle. Okay, now I know how far it is from here to there, from 1 to 5. I can find that by doing 5 minus 1. Right, so I get a length of 4 here, and then I can do this by doing 4 minus 1, I get a length of 3 for this side. Okay, and then if we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? c squared equals a squared plus b squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So then I can plug those in, and I can say, well, c squared is equal to 4 plus 3, 4 squared plus 3 squared, c squared is equal to 16 plus 9, that's 25, is equal to this. Find the square root, and then c is equal to 5. All right, now, if I am just given those coordinates, remember I had to subtract them. 
Okay, so what did I do to get the 4? I had to subtract. I had to do 5 minus 1, which was x2 minus x1. And then I had to square that. Plus, I had to do 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1. And I had to square that. And that's c squared. Well, to find c, I had to square root it to get rid of the square. So I have to square root this entire thing if I want to put that all in one formula. So that's my distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. The order of these coordinates doesn't matter. 1 or 2 because we're squaring it. It's like uh, whether it comes out negative or positive, it's going to be positive. So there's my distance formula. Okay, so we've got an example here. The school is 4 miles east and 1 mile south of your apartment. Okay, we can put this on a coordinate system. 4 miles east and 1 mile south. We go down for south of the apartment. And the recycling center is 2 miles east and 3 miles north. Estimate the distance between the recycling center and your school. Okay, so the distance formula is x1 minus x2, so 4 minus 2. Again, the order doesn't matter, 2 minus 4, 4 minus 2, because we're squaring it. Plus negative 1 minus 3, or we could do it the other way around, 3 plus 1, doesn't matter, negative 1 minus 3 squared. This gives us 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. And so we have 4 plus negative 4 squared is still positive, 16. So d is the square root of 20, and that comes to be about 4.5. And there you have it, distance and midpoint formula.